Hey there, everyone! <laughs> my name is Gutslove, and this is my favorite game on the Citadel. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is inching its way closer to the new console generation, and I am stoked! For those who don't know, Mass Effect is one of my favorite trilogies in gaming. I love the story, the characters, the game mechanics, except for Mass Effect 1. I don't know what else made me love the series. I was in university when Mass Effect 3 came out and I heard about the indoctrination theory thanks to one angry YouTuber who years later jokingly said he was gonna just jump into Kingdom Hearts 3 without preparation. Joke or not, not cool. He tried to warn you. So, I got interested in the series, Mass Effect 2 was available for the PS3 and I played it, and I freaking loved it. I got the trilogy for Christmas and I finally played the first game of the series, as well as the third. I have Andromeda, but I haven't played it yet. I want to see how much of a dumpster fire it is. I don't know if it'll be a stream or not, or I'm just gonna play it off screen. I don't claim to be the uber Mass Effect gamer, but I thought, why not share some hints and tips for newcomers? And lo and behold, this video was born. Now, I don't remember what exactly changed in the announcements for the Legendary Edition, but the following hints and tips are based off the original PS3 versions of the games. I know it was PC and Xbox originally, but I played it on the PlayStation, so let's get to it. First things first, whether you want to jump right into Mass Effect 2 or 3 and just skip one completely, there's the interactive comics that will have the vital decisions that influence the story, like who dies on Vermeer and such. There's also a recap of the story so far, so you don't have to worry about missing stuff. It does take away from the experience, not gonna lie. Some context, and they do tend to go pretty long, so yeah. No money or resources, though. So please consider playing the games instead of skipping. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Mass Effect 1. Starting with the first game and the most different of the three, yeesh. This one shows how it was originally made for the PC. Many things you can do, be it part of the story or just a side mission, you don't even know how to activate or progress through unless you talk to everyone. So, yeah, rule number one, talk to everyone. Press everything. Examine even the tiniest nook and cranny, because there's this one side mission where you have to look for every keeper in the Citadel and they are pretty good at hiding, so yeah, every nook and cranny. Save before you hack. There's some hacking terminals you have to get to and they won't give you second chances. Use your Omnigel conservatively. Only in hacking emergencies should you use it. Engineers are good at hacking. Biotics are superpowers. Soldiers have the pew pew. Sell your unused armor and bullet types and buy the new ones. Check every store and make sure you're updated. Think of it like Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 whenever you have to check up if you had like new wands or new shields. There are certain Paragon or Renegade prompts available only when you reach a certain level in that morality. The series as a whole is pretty finicky with this, so even if you try to be a half and half Shepherd, half Paragon or half Renegade or Para Renegade or Renegon as they say, you're gonna get screwed. Unless you do a new game plus and get the information from a completed save. Whatever level of morality you have will affect Mass Effect 2. Want to cap your level? Mass Effect 1 originally capped at level 60 and that was only possible if you check almost every planet and do almost all of the side missions. Not all planets have objectives, so for the love of God, use an online list. I had these side mission lists as PDFs, can't recall where I got them, so please, if you can find it, use it. Use online maps. These planets can look barren and pretty much a wasteland unless you have a map on hand. There's some side missions for Tally, Garrus, and Rex, specifically. Think of it as doing them a favor for the specific character. It'll help in keeping a certain loyalty from them. Especially Rex. We like Rex. He's the Krogan uncle we all need. Do Pharaohs before Novaria. And in Novaria, there's many ways to get to the labs and also to cleanse the lab. You might activate one on accident like I did and this will affect your morality, if memory serves me. So proceed with caution. You can fuck up easily. 
There's a few ways to get out of the Citadel after this mission. No spoilers, but I prefer the punching method. Mass Effect 2. My favorite of the trilogy! Check every nook and cranny. I'm being serious. There's points in a mission that can coincide with a side mission you've already activated or can activate whenever. Even some side missions you don't need to be activated until you get the thing that's coincidentally in the area of a mission. So please, search everywhere! It's going to take some time, I know, but it'll be worth it for the morality and the experience points. Get discounts! Stores can offer you discounts depending on who you talk to. If you got information from your Mass Effect 1 game, you get more money and resources, but the budget's a bit tighter in this game, so discounts are a must. If you plan on getting the fish, you'll have to feed them after each mission. I suggest you talk with Yeoman Chambers enough to activate the dialogue that has her offering to feed the fish. Fish are costly. Talk to your team. After each mission, you can open up conversations with your main crew. NPCs do have something to talk about, but focus mostly on your team. Even when you're passing through an area from the ship, you can hear them like saying something nonchalantly off screen. It's a bit of a detail that helps you in the world building. Like say, oh, you're gonna hear this guy talk about his daughter and so and so. It's very cute, it's just a side thing. But focus mostly on your team. You need to talk to them in order to reach certain points, like activating their loyalty missions, gaining the ship upgrades, or even romance options. The first two are very important. Upgrade your ship as soon as possible. The extra stuff like heavy weapons and shit can be done whenever, but ship upgrades are a must. Soldiers are now the only class PACKING with a wide variety of weapons. The other classes had limited choices. I think this changed for Legendary Edition, but I just wanted to let you know. Also, if you have the different bullet types like cryo, fire, or even the tech affecting ones, use them! It only takes a few seconds to activate them for each gun. I like the fire one. The fire one is very nice. This is vital, by the way. Don't do sight missions willy-nilly. If you run dry of sight missions, it'll make talking to your team limited before you get the last members of your ragtag team. Keep at least five, maybe three. A few missions not done so you can finish talking to the remaining team members. This isn't really important, but it's very funny. Talk to Joker after each mission. He always has something to say, be it about the people you took on the last mission or a complaint about the AI on his ship. You can also sneak up on him. He'll say something funny after a few seconds. Three things tops with each visit. Yeah, this is 98% of my job. I just watch buttons flash. Sometimes I press one. Once you get a number of team members, the game will lock you into plot-driven missions, so make sure you explore and do stuff before that happens. It happens at least twice, so be careful. Regarding DLC, I suggest doing Arrival last. You can do whatever with the others, but Shadow Broker does need a certain level of morality. Keep that in mind. Once you have a certain character in the Derelict Reaper mission, and you do a few missions, you have a time limit for a thing. A very specific thing. I want to avoid as many spoilers as I can, but go do the suicide mission when this happens. Save them! Mass Effect 3 Okay, this is where the game screwed up. The whole side mission thing. Ever since the game's release, it never told you whether or not you progressed in the mission or if you got the thing that will help in finishing said mission. Mission, mission, mission. You have no idea how many items I missed in getting during my travels to help people on the Citadel or I conveniently got the thing, but the person is no longer there. The same goes to certain missions. Nothing is static, so don't feel like you can do them whenever. Since you're in war times, not everything is static like I said before. So you have to be vigilant if you want that extra XP and more resources for the war effort against the Reapers. In the original version of the game, you had to have a buttload of support included with the online multiplayer. Then the patch happened and modified the minimum amount, helping out new players. So maybe this got lessened in Legendary Edition? I'm not sure. In terms of romance options, if you romanced either one of the two humans or Liara in Mass Effect 1, you can continue the romance but only if you didn't cheat on them in Mass Effect 2, which means you must not romance anyone in Mass Effect 2 if you want your chosen husband or waifus. Once you go to the Cerberus headquarters, you cannot do any other missions or anything else. You're locked in. 
make sure you've done what you can before this. And this is a little bit of a spoiler for the entire series, but most male romance options in Mass Effect 2 either die off, are not worth it, or they cheat on you in Mass Effect 3. I wish I was kidding. And there's only like one good male romance option, and because he's cool and he's a badass and he will always stick with you no matter what, and he's the only one who's worth it, makes you really think how the guys get the more sexy times with the ladies. I mean, look at Tally, she's obviously bi. And that's it. Those are all my hints and tips for any newcomer driving headfirst into the Mass Effect trilogy. I hope this helps. I love this series even with its faults. Please find a guide for the side missions where a PDF exists so you can keep track of stuff. Please don't make my mistakes. And I hope you enjoyed your stay on the Citadel. I should go. She said, I should go. Do I sound like that? Yes. Yes, you do. How come nobody told me about this before? I'm open to feedback here. You should never announce your plan, even when leaving a conversation, which shows weakness. Maybe it's, I should go. I should go. I should go. <laughs>